this is an interesting looking skull. But what's it from? Well, it's got canines, which means it's going to be a mammal. But it's not a wolf. The skull's far too robust for a wolf. So how about a lion? Not with a sagittal crest that strong. This is from a major bone crusher. How about a bear? Again, not with teeth like this. This is, this is an animal that's got a bite force far exceeding that of a bear. The answer? It's a hyena. So the skulls from a hyena. What makes it so special? Hyenas can be found throughout Africa and parts of Southern Asia. So what makes this skull particularly special? But this skull didn't come from Africa or Asia. It came from here, Creswell Crags, on the border between Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. Does this mean that there were hyenas in the British Isles? Yes, and not just at Creswell Crags, but several other locations across the UK and Ireland. Now, over at Kirkdale in Yorkshire, some of the first UK hyena finds were made in a cave near the village by William Buckland in 1821. And yes, that's the same William Buckland who, three years later, would describe the first known dinosaur to science, Megalosaurus. So the UK's hyena finds weren't the first ones from Europe. The French anatomist Georges Cuvier had described the species formally in 1812 after several specimens had been found throughout Europe and had been sent to him for analysis. And considering that a lot of these bones had been found in caves, it ended up with the very original name of Cave Hyena. Now, Cave Hyena is its colloquial name. Its full taxonomic name is Crocuta Crocuta Spelea. From both anatomical and genetic studies, it appears that the Cave Hyena is closely related to the Monday Spotted Hyena, so much so that it's actually considered a subspecies of the Spotted Hyena. There are, however, some differences in the size of the animals. The mon-spotted hyena weighs in at around about 70 kilograms when fully grown, with the females being slightly larger than the males. However, the cave hyena is a much bigger, much more robust animal, weighing in at about 102 kilograms. So these two animals do appear to be very, very closely related, and although we need to be careful when making assumptions about the behaviour of these extinct animals, the fact that they are so very closely related to the modern spotted hyena means we could use the spotted hyenas to give us an idea of how these animals behaved and how they looked. And when we combine this with the fossil evidence that we find from the various cave sites across Europe and Asia, we put these, this gives us an idea of the behaviour and some of the social aspects. This is the kind of stuff that doesn't necessarily fossilise directly. So to give you an example of this, the cave sites where we find the hyena fossils are also filled with the remains of their prey animals. And quite a lot of this. So these animals are clearly dragging parts of their prey back to these dens that they've got in the caves. Now this suggests that they're using the caves for shelter, that they're using the caves as a uh, family den, a place where their social group lives and is based out of at least for a significant amount of time and the fact that so many of the remains of the prey animals as well as coprolites that's fossilized poop also found in these caves suggests that these animals are living and developing as a social group for a significant amount of time within these site these cave structures we don't just find the adults in there either, we also find the remains of juveniles, such as again this little baby hyena that was found in one of the caves in Cressel Crags. And from what we can tell from this little individual is that it doesn't appear to have been diseased or injured, so its death is a bit of a mystery, but bear in mind that infant mortality in the wild is quite high so it could be that it didn't get enough food it could be that it died of exposure or something that's just not or a short term illness that just doesn't appear in the, the remains of the bones of the animal 
So what kind of prey animals are we looking at here? Well, they found the remains of woolly rhino, Coleodonta, along with another species of more temperate rhino, Stephanorhinus, the narrow-nosed rhino. They've also found both European and steppe bison remains. In these caves with the hyenas, they've found wild horses, various species of deer, as well as hippos. Yep, that's right, hippopotamus, also from the UK, found in the caves at Cresswell Crags, along with a few, several other sites in the, the United Kingdom. So you may have noticed that hyenas don't run wild in Europe anymore. So that brings up two questions. First one, where did the hyenas come from? And secondly, where did they go? Why do we not have them as part of the natural wildlife of Europe? And we do still have large predators in Europe, such as wolves and brown bears. So what happened to the hyena? It's you know, bigger than the wolf, but smaller than the brown bear. Where did it go? So to answer the first question, where did these hyenas come from? Well, from the genetic studies of the remains of these animals found across Eurasia, we do know that they're closely related to the spotted hyena, as I've already said. However, it also shows that they came out of Africa in three separate waves. So the first lot left Africa and went into Central and Eastern Asia around about three and a half million years ago. And this species actually became even larger than the, the, the European variety. So much so that it's often sometimes considered itself a separate subspecies of the spotted hyena, Krakuta ultima. About the second and third waves left Africa and went into Western Asia and Europe. The first of these leaving Africa around one and a half million years ago, and the final wave coming into Europe around 360,000 years ago. And it's from this third and final wave that the remains of the British hyenas at Cresswell Crags, Kirkdale, and throughout the rest of the British Isles come from. So as to what led to the cave hyenas extinction, this is a little more complicated. Now the last of the British specimens come from around about 46,000 years ago, with the species going into serious decline between 20,000 and 30,000 years ago, and finally becoming extinct around about 13,000 years ago. Now as far as, the, for, as far as the British Isles are concerned, their disappearance in Britain precedes the advancements of the ice sheets which took place around 33,000 years ago. So it isn't likely that the onset of the last glacial maximum led to the extinction of these hyenas. Besides, the, they'd already survived previous episodes of glaciation throughout Europe. Maybe there was a side effect of the glaciations that had an impact on them. The modern spotted hyenas live in the grasslands of Africa and pollen analysis of the coprolites and surrounding sediments indicate that the cave hyenas also like to live in the grasslands in Eurasia. Now their extinction coincides with the expansion of the woodlands in Europe and it might actually be that that is a major contributing factor to the extinction of the hyenas. The more open grassland area that was their favourite environment is actually being replaced by a much denser forest environment. And then there's the human factor. Now Neanderthals have been present in Europe from about 400,000 years so they've coincided with the existence of the cave hyenas pretty much the entire time the certainly the third wave of cave hyenas has been in Europe so it's not likely to be an impact of certainly Neanderthals in Europe however modern, modern humans homo sapiens entered Europe around about 40,000 years ago but that still leaves a substantial time gap between the emergence of modern humans and the extinction of cave hyenas in Europe so there's a possibility that at least in this case humans aren't entirely to blame for the extinction of the cave hyena in, in Eurasia. Now we know that humans shared the same caves as the hyenas. We found the remains of not just the humans but also their tools and the animals that they've captured and, and butchered. And it might be the combination of increased pressure and competition from Homo sapiens. Certainly once Homo sapiens started to domesticate the dog and combining that with the diminishing of their habitat as Europe goes from grassland to forest that might have just pushed the cave hyena over the edge. For now, however, we will just have to accept the fact that we don't have all the answers on this one. We're just going to have to wait around for more evidence to emerge from other finds. Okay, so this does actually lead me on to the last topic that I want to cover, and that's the interaction between cave hyenas and Homo sapiens. Now, personally, I quite like the animals, but I like weird animals anyway. And certainly as far as as modern carnivores are concerned, hyenas are most definitely unique. 
but I know a lot of people don't share my thoughts on hyenas and a lot of people do have a very negative image of these animals and to be honest this is a perception that might go back a very long way. Hyenas are often portrayed as immoral and filthy, as treacherous and as thieves. In some cultures they're seen as physical incarnations of spirits uh, such as the Jin. In other cultures there are things like were hyenas, in particular the uh, Buddha of East Africa. Now not the werewolves of European mythos, which are humans that turn into wolves during the night. The were hyenas of East Africa are hyenas that turn into humans during the day and they often are found feasting on the bodies of the recently deceased. Now hyena attacks on humans do happen even in the 21st century and we've got evidence from of human bones that have been gnawed on by hyenas. In fact the oldest known traces of human hair have actually come from the fossilised remains of hyena dung and date back to between 197 and 257,000 years. And just to clarify this is actually from a brown hyena dung in southern Africa not European cave hyena. But still it shows that hyenas have been eating humans for quite a long time. And when it comes to the much larger East Asian subspecies of cave hyena, it's sort of actually the predation and competition from these much, much larger animals actually stalled the migration of humans from Asia into the Americas. So coming back to the European species of hyena, one thing that is notable in its absence is cave art depicting hyenas. In fact, throughout Europe, there's only one real definitive example of cave art depicting a hyena, and that's from Chavot Cave in France. Now, so there are several other images that may potentially be hyenas, but this is the only one that we've got throughout all of Europe that is definitively a hyena. Now, this raises the obvious question of why? Why are hyena images so rare in the cave art of Europe? Now, when you consider the variety of Pleistocene animals depicted in European cave art from this time period, why are those hyenas absent from it? I thought that likely this comes down to two factors. First off, the cave hyenas were disappearing from the fossil record about the same time that cave art was starting to flourish in Europe. So there is a very real possibility that actually cave hyenas really weren't that common at this point and that human interactions with cave hyenas were very infrequent so they just weren't part of the broader cultural mindset within the populations of these early Europeans. And the second possibility is that this human distaste for hyenas actually goes right the way back to the Neolithic and the, Pe and the Mesolithic. Now hyenas wouldn't have been considered prey animals like say the Auroch or the Megalossus would have been. They're not quite as large and impressive as something like the woolly mammoths or the woolly rhinos. So they may not have attracted that much attention in the culture of the Paleolithic peoples of Europe. Now lions and other predators are often seen in the cave art and some of these artistic renderings of, of the lions are absolutely fantastic. Now hyenas wouldn't have been considered prey animals like the auroch or the megalosaurus, nor were they as large and impressive as the woolly rhinos and the woolly mammoths. And when you consider the intelligence of hyenas and their social nature and how successful they are as, as hunters and scavengers, it does make you wonder why on earth they have been left out of the artwork that we see in the caves throughout Europe. Now, although this is largely speculation, there is a possibility that the prehistoric peoples of Europe actually didn't hold hyenas in any particular high regard and saw them more as worthy of contempt rather than of veneration. The forest replacing the grasslands that the cave hyenas thrived upon, and with the likely competition of modern Homo sapiens, certainly Homo sapiens with domesticated dogs, the cave hyena was extinct in Britain by 46,000 years ago, and by 13,000 years ago had become extinct across the rest of Eurasia, thus ending the existence of one of the most impressive and misunderstood animals of the Pleistocene.